Welcome to the Guaranteed Irish Business Podcast, where each week we're joined by leaders of Guaranteed Irish member businesses to chat about how they sustain jobs, communities and provenance. Supported by FBD Insurance, Ireland's largest homegrown insurer. Support. It's what we do. Hi there, I'm Breed O'Connell and joining me today is Derek Foley-Butler, CEO of Grid Finance, to talk about their financial health platform, helping small businesses bounce back from COVID and the Grid Foundation. Derek, you're very welcome. Lovely to be here, Breed. That's a bit of a mouthful and I'm really interested to talk to you, not alone about your services, but the Grid Foundation as well. So lots to discuss today. Tell us a little bit about the business. I know there's 15 people employed. You're based across Dunleary, Limerick and Lisbon and in a st- it has been established since 2013. What does Grid Finance do? Well, in, in short, we're, we're trying to help uh, as many small businesses in Ireland build their financial health. And we do that in two ways at the moment with uh, capital. Uh, so we put money into small businesses. We do that really flexibly in a way that nobody else does in the market. Um, and then we also provide analytics. Why do we provide analytics? Most small business owners don't fully understand uh, the financial characteristics of their business, what makes their businesses financially strong. And our analytics solution helps them understand that in a way that's very accessible. Okay, I like that. So they're really understanding the the, the commodity of money um, and what it can do for their business and how they can scale it, I'm guessing. But in terms of the flexibility and, I suppose, the competitiveness of it, why are you different to anyone else who's going to lend money? So it, it, most small businesses, they operate day to day, month to month from a cash flow perspective. So what's unique about our funding solutions is that your repayments flex with how your business is doing. So instead of having a big lumpy monthly repayment as you would to your bank or or, or any other provider, you repay daily a grid loan and you repay it as a percentage of your revenue. So that means that when you're having a quiet month, you're repaying less when you're having a busy month you're repaying more so it's a fantastically flexible yeah. uh, solution for small businesses a good solution for the small business for sure in the overall scheme of things at the end of the year has that cost them more or less or the same I, in terms of the payback time because there's obviously admin in the flexibility piece so i'm wondering is there an extra oh well, so, so i suppose that's the beauty of our our, our tech platform that we've yeah. built ourselves um, all of the daily repayments, it's all fully automated. Right they yeah. never have to worry about it. Brilliant. Um, and that's a, another key part of the value that we do. You, we take all of the hassle out of repayments. So, you know, a lot of small business owners will be sitting there on the 15th of the month mm. thinking, do I have mm. enough cash to meet my b- big lumpy direct debit to my bank? Uh, you never have to worry about that with, well, with what we do. That's great. And how has it been so far in terms of success and uptake? No, great. You know, we've been doing this flexible financing for five years now. Uh, we how did that how did that work for you through COVID? I'm just thinking. Well, so you know, COVID 2020 was very challenging, yeah. um, and we'll touch on the foundation piece in a moment. We spent most of 2020 campaigning for small businesses, mm. uh, and that's because we were, you know, we ourselves were wiped out. Mm. You know, we in the space of two weeks, in March wow. of 2020. 82% of our businesses closed. So if, if I go oh. back to what I was saying there about uh, flexible repayments, if if a business isn't generating revenue, we're not getting paid. For sure. And and if you're closed, you're not generating revenue. So the, the product worked brilliantly for our customers uh, throughout 2020 because we couldn't be asking people to pay when they're not trading uh, and because the whole nature of the the the, the, the product uh, but obviously a hard a hard year for us so w- you know we came into 2021 uh, looking to get back to 2019 levels which mm. we did and then last year we grew by 150 percent oh and wow we, we'll double again this year brilliant uh, and we're very ambitious to build you know a platform that's very much uh pro sme uh in its product solutions but also in its thinking uh, and that we can really be the brand that's associated with small businesses in Ireland. And when you talk about SME in Ireland, what size down are you talking about in terms of employee numbers? Yeah, so we, we, we're particularly, we'll service anyone, mm. um, small, medium, um, micro. 
uh, but we're particularly focused on the small and the micro because that's where we see the greatest gap in the market and where we think businesses really struggle to access finance um, across the board. So 10 employees or less or 20 uh, employees? Yeah, like, like you, you know, f- sort of 50 or less. 50 or less. 50 okay. or less would be the typical uh, definition of a small Which would be the majority of business owners which is the vast, in Ireland. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, we I had a call earlier this week and it was a great reminder for me when I shared the, the, the statistic that 99% of the businesses in this country are small businesses for sure and they employ two-thirds of the people in the economy so the real engine of economic activity in ireland are small businesses not necessarily big multinationals oh it's okay give me give me a few ideas in derek in terms of who the typical business that j- that can benefit from your services uh, we honestly any small business um so food producers candle food makers, producers, producers. I, uh, literally any type of small business can access one of our two capital products and is there a limit where you only allow them in once they're established for a year or two or has it or could start up supply chain yeah so, so we again with our sort of customer mindset we'll try and support anyone mm. the big thing the big challenge for complete startups for us mm. is that they have no track record that's right so we'll typically say you know we need to see trading for six or nine months to be able to see that there is enough cash flow mm-hmm. in the business we're not equity investors mm. we're debt mm. providers so you have to see some cash flow there um but, you know, generally speaking, we'll try and help as many people as we can. So you set very ambitious targets to help, and I am quoting you here, at least 10,000 small businesses with at least one solution by our 10th birthday. So you're five years in existence. How is that going? And why be so focused on that small business provider? Well, we would look at Great as being a purpose-driven business. So, you know, if, if we were a traditional bank or another financial institution, we'd probably be making our targets the volume of lending or in AIB's case it's their net interest margin um, for us w- our, being a purpose driven business we want to focus on how many people can we help or how many small businesses uh, can we help and 10,000 is a it's a big enough number uh, for us to be able to show that we've had a really positive impact um, but it's still an achievable number 10,000 10, out of 250,000 small businesses um, is still a small percentage um, so it's, it's achievable, but but enough for us to be able to show we've had a big impact. And I know you were very active during COVID where you were really shouting and I suppose waving the flag for SMEs for the support. And the government did come in and did listen to you guys and really put in great supports for businesses, all sizes. And many businesses would have been gone for it. So well done on being so proactive. And is that, if I may stretch over to the evolution and the movement into the foundation piece then? Yeah, so so we, you know, we've always been a purpose-driven business, always focused on the, the positive impact that we can uh, we can generate uh, as a business. Mm. Um, I think the best businesses in this century are going to be those that sort of embrace positive impact and profitability at mm. the same time. Type of a social enterprise with um, a commercial angle. Yeah, yeah with, with, with a more disciplined commercial yes. angle. Uh, but the, uh, you know, in parallel with that very, very clear profit motive, you're also measuring and understanding your broader impact and, and making sure it's a positive one. Mm. So I think they're going to be the best businesses that are that will be built in this century. Um, so in 2020, as I say, you know, commercially we were very challenged. So we decided to put our sort of brain power into, uh, you know, advocating for small businesses. We we recognised very early on that small businesses are woefully undercapitalized there's lots of policy reasons for why they're undercapitalized so that they wouldn't actually be able uh, to withstand a crisis uh, uh, like the pandemic was where they were being forced to stop trading mm. so on the 15th of uh, march 2020 we took a full page ad in the business post and said we need a 10 billion euro bailout for the small business sector and some people laughed at that um and many people in the public sector would have said we should just let these businesses fail um but over the following months we really made the case that this was a unique crisis it wasn't an economic one it was a, a government mandated mm. uh, crisis for small businesses mm. because the government was obviously trying to protect public health of course um, so the government needed to step into the breach so out of that campaign along with others obviously who were advocating as well you know, we got the wage subsidy scheme, the tax warehousing, um, you know, the rates, rebates and all of that package of measures. The government were actually excellent in the heel of the hunt, weren't they? Well, you in know, terms of the packages they put out, they definitely saved people's livelihood and lives, I would say. No, like, you know, and I, 
I, I think there's probably a lack of recognition mm. um, uh, uh, about how well our, our, our institutions performed in the pandemic, mm. both around the public health outcomes and the economic outcomes. Mm. Um, I think it, it's absolutely world class. Mm. There hasn't really been enough recognition of and that. And even the know. educational institutions, they were superb. Yeah. So many, I agree. So you, you led the charge in that, and out of that came the Grid Foundation. I'm really yeah. interested in this because I love a social enterprise with uh, that doesn't depend on handouts either. So tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Yeah, so so what we've wanted, to, so as I said, 2021 and 22 was focused on sort of rebuilding the business commercially. And now this year we want to take the legacy of of the work that we did in 2020 and build on that and really our, our sort of the key theme and the foundation is to try and get policymakers um and the public more broadly talking about sme financial health and the importance of small businesses to our society you know one of our key beliefs is that they are economically important but actually socially important as well so you know, if you go to any rural town, if the small businesses disappear from those towns, what's left in terms mm. of the social fabric? So we want to start that co- uh, conversation, uh, uh, you know, that people understand that small businesses are economic, uh, economically and socially important. And more importantly, what policy uh, improvements do we want to create for small businesses. So there'll be three initiatives this year uh, in the foundation in, in its first year. The first will be an SME financial health index, which we're developing with Red Sea. Uh, and that will gauge exactly how strong uh, every uh, six months uh, this small business uh, sector is, uh, financially strong. Um, and then we can use that to, to speak to policymakers. Um, and then the other two events are a national financial health conference and an inaugural um, Irish FinTech Awards, and uh, they'll they'll be happening uh, in the autumn. Okay, very exciting and big events. Big events, but uh, Derek, there's, there's no shortage quite, of ambition, you know. No shortage of ambition. It's to roll it out as the next yeah, job. Of course, so execution. Looking is for execution is everything. So I'm looking for, forward to uh, keeping an eye on that space and every success to you. In in terms of um, grid finance itself, what are the plans for the next twelve months? Yeah, look, we're we're you know commercially we're looking to grow uh, significantly. We'll the core business will double again this year, um, and we're looking at partnerships as a big driver then into the next phase of Grid. Um, you know, we see the the building of Grid as a multi annual um, project. You know, the end point is to be truly competing with the domestic banks in the SME finance space. And that will take a number of years to do. Um, why do you think, and it's great having the confidence, why do you think you can actually bring it to that state that you're competing with the likes of the domestic banks? Uh, because that's where that's where the market need is. And mm. uh, somebody needs to step into that uh, that void that's been left behind by the pillar banks. Um, so, you know, a, 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 a tech-driven platform like Grid will, uh, you know, can do that. Um, and it can do it very profitably as well. So in terms of the types of clients or businesses you're looking to help out there, there they can be small one man startup uh, businesses who have a set of accounts, let's put it crudely, so you know that you can they, they, there's 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 I suppose skin in the game from their perspective. Hundred percent. And yeah. there's a strategy going forward with a growth pattern and obviously other businesses up along the ladder, up to the kind of fifty employee mark. Yeah, but even more, you know, mm. like one of our biggest clients employs five hundred people around the right. country in a you know, in a chain of stores, mm. eleven um you know, eleven stores in that group. So you know, there's there's really no upper limits right. per se. You know, our the main upper limit on our funding is a million euro. We'll do up to a million euro into a business, mm. um, and that'll grow over time. Mm. Um, and it's highly flexible funding. Um, and on the smaller side, yeah, you know, we'll we'll help sole traders, micro businesses, um, with with some proven trading history. You know. Well, it seems like it's all wrapped up and I wish you every success. There's certainly room in the small business market for that in this day and age where banks are leaving the market and we need more choice and more options out there. Derek Foley, Butler, CEO of Grid Finance, thank you very much for joining me today on the Guaranteed Irish Business Podcast. Pleasure. If you'd like to learn more about Grid Finance, we'll leave a link to their website in the show notes. Thank you as always for listening and don't forget to hit subscribe wherever you're listening and leave us a review if you like this episode. The Guaranteed Irish Business Podcast, sponsored by FBD Insurance, Ireland's largest homegrown insurer. Support. It's what we do.